Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Guys, I'm bringing back an oldie, probably the most popular oldie from my time as a young child. Stay tuned. Coffee sponsor of the day is Candy Sim. Candy writes, greetings. Hi, Harry. I've been watching your videos and enjoy them very much. Keep them coming. Here, buy you a coffee. Smile. Oh, Candy, thank you so much. I appreciate the hot cup of joe that I most definitely need this morning. If you want to be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you all in advance and thank you for keeping the coffee train rolling. Today, childhood racket that I never actually got, Prince Graphite 110. And this is the original, as you can see by the grip. See, it's all worn out there. See, this doesn't even say, unless it's worn out, what grip size it is. It's literally a blank mark. I'm going to show you the sides here. It doesn't say anything on the sides. It doesn't say anything on this side. It doesn't say anything on the inside. All it says is Prince Graphite. But you know it's a 110 because it's big. Doesn't even say anything on the top, but sorry, but but you know it's a 110. This is one of those rackets that I feel, and it is in 1980, I want to say it was 1985 or six. Um, these rackets were like 200 bucks, and we could only get. Well, I didn't get, but uh, people got the Prince Graphite um, Pro or the Prince Pros because they were like $99 or under um, $99. Uh, this was the uh, the big dog that everybody wanted. Um, this, this was actually everybody's, you know, had, was everybody's wanted list. Um, the Andre Agassi played with it. Michael Chang played with it. I think maybe even Jim Courier played with it. But all the up and coming stars of the day uh, started off with a Prince Graphite. It's uh, it was definitely uh, number one, like in popularity in, in the late '80s into the early '90s. Um, so I I managed to get one. There were there were different variations of this racket too. Um, this one has grommets. There is versions of this that do not have grommets. I think those were the real early versions. So, you know, I'm having a hit with one of these for like 30 something years. So I managed to get one and uh, let's, let's spec this thing out. I'm going to grab my scale and balance board and, and let's uh, let's see what it weighs. All right, let's see what this puppy weighs. Uh, thin beam. Brings back a lot of memories that I didn't have since I didn't have this racket. Uh, so strong weight, no over grip. It had a turn of grip on it. I took it off. 12.8. Um, let's see what it equals to. Oh, 363. So we're in fed range here, as I always say. A little over fed range. Let's see what the balance is. Three twelve. Let's check the swing weight. All right, so let's uh Swing weight this thing. Three 
333. All right, let's quickly analyze. I'm noticing some things. All right, so a couple things that I'm noticing as I'm holding it. This is the original Prince leather grip on there. It feels like a four and a half. It's definitely not a five eighths. Uh, and it's short, as you can see. It's it's meant for like a one-handed backhand because I'm looking at the top. Uh, see, it's measured. It's The handle is just not made that long because there's room there, which means it ended already. So, I mean, if I, I mean, I have a one hand, it doesn't matter to me, but if you had a two handed, this, look, look at my finger. It's past the tape if I'm, I'm hitting a two hander. So I guess those of you who used to hit this racket, do you remember, um, like your finger being past the, the finishing tape? Cause it definitely not going to fit two hands on most people. Um, the other thing I noticed is uh, it, it's a thin beam. <laughs> it's a thin beam. My guess is it's like 19. That's my guess. I, I need to get one of those caliper things, but it's like Pro Staff 85 kind of a beam. Um, but yes, yeah, these are solid rackets back in the day. Um, but let's take a look at the numbers here. 363 on the weight. Like I said, that's about fed weight. Balance is about 312. Real close to fed weight. Like all this is almost like fed weight there. Um, 16 by 19 on the string pattern. W by the time I was able to handle these things, I was like senior in high school. Um, I got to string these. I used to love stringing these because they were so easy. That 16 by 19 pattern was actually nicely spread out. So super easy. The 90 of this was even easier. It was a 14 by 16, 14 mains by 16 crosses. I was able to knock that puppy out in like eight minutes or seven minutes. It's uh, It was so um, easy to string. It looks like there's the original strings on here. It looks like Prince uh, Synthetic Gut without the Duraflex. It's the original Prince Synthetic Gut. And it's probably been sitting in this racket for over 20 years. Um, let's go on the court uh, and see if uh, I can bring some nostalgia back. could see that this is still a very comfortable racket for everybody from how everybody hit today um i mean hayden probably never seen this racket before neither did eli i mean unless it was in your parents garage or something like that no not even no. that huh? rob's camps wow rob's camps wow <laughs> i didn't even have one that old i didn't have that one i had some older ones but not the, not the graphite all right well let's uh hayden what did you think of this one this thing's like i don't know 35 years old Felt pretty comfortable, pretty normal actually. It didn't feel like too much different than a standard racket that I use today. So felt pretty at home with it, I'd say. Full graphite racket. Yeah. Full graphite. Did you did you notice anything about it being an oversized? It's a one ten. Um, maybe a little less focus. I could get away with more, a little some more miss hits, but yeah, overall didn't feel too different. Right. Yeah. Oh, cool. Eli. Yeah. Also, for me, not too not too bad. Um, 
I did notice it was a bit heftier than the rackets I normally use as well as the grip being bigger, but other than that, it was a pretty comfortable racket and I enjoyed hitting with it. Yeah, it felt, it felt like home. I mean, this was the number one used racket back in the day. And I'm talking mid to late 80s to early part 90s. So number one racket, guys, that everybody wanted, including myself when I was that age. But this thing was about 200 bucks back then. So, which is probably like 400 bucks yeah, now. Right. <laughs> so, Coach Rob. Uh, it was fun using the old uh, leather grip again. Um, it felt good. Uh, ball was pocketing nice. Uh, weight was great. It felt really good. You could see why it was so popular back in the day, especially transitioning from some of those metal rackets um, into the graphite. And this, you could really feel the difference. Um, big sweet spot. And nice hitting. Yeah. No, I think I think there's uh, definitely a place for this racket even today. Um, I feel like a lot of the juniors, a lot of the pros could still use something like this. So this was the one that everybody played with because it was the oversized, but they, they made a 90. They made a little guy of this one that wasn't as popular, but everybody wanted the 110 oversized. It doesn't say it here. Interesting. It used to say something here may have worn off after 30 hmm. this is interesting years. exactly i was like i don't see anything here huh. i wonder if this belonged to a pro all right. <laughs> all right guys i want to thank my man coach rob and i got I want to thank hayden and eli for hanging out with me today and bringing back some old memories with this prince graphite guys thank you for watching tennis spin where we put our spin on your tennis Hey man, he, you can tell he been some, through some emotional damage. No man, <laughs> you look like you went through hell and back. You need some AP tennis, that's what you need. Babe, I, I have some emotional damage. Uh.